This is still Breakfast Daily on City TV. And of course, it's the May Day, Labor Day, Workers' Day, whatever you'd like to call it, edition of the show. My name is Apio and I'm here, of course, with David Kwekusechi. Now, since we're talking about Workers' Day, we're celebrating the International Day of the Worker. It is only right that we have a conversation that is befitting of the day. And before I introduce our guests for this segment, do remember that the show is interactive. Use the WhatsApp line 020 444 to send us a WhatsApp message. And of course, across all social media platforms, the hashtag Breakfast Daily is yours for the taking. Now let me introduce my guests. We have the Labor, the National Labor Commission in the house. That's a very big deal, you mm -hmm. know. And this time, we are not coming to fight. We are not talking about strikes or anything of this sort. We're really just here to educate you as a worker, as you rest, as you rejuvenate on a day that has been set aside for you and your colleagues, educate you on what your rights are, and also the things that you need to know as you're in employment, as you're in your, your working years. So we have here in the studio with us Dr. Bernice Welbeck, She's the Director of Admin and Human Resources at the National Labor Commission of Ghana. And then we also have a gentleman who today comes in peace. <laughs> but he knows a lot about labor and labor unrest and what it means to be a worker in Ghana and what it also means to be able to stand up for your rights as a worker. The indefatigable Angel Kabonu is here. He's a president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRATS. Good morning, Good morning. ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And first time on Breakfast Daily. Oh, I've been there for you a while. Been, yeah. I've been with yes. City for a while. Oh, no, that's for you, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> years and years yeah. and years. Yeah. But you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So let me just, just dive right into it by asking who uh, falls under the classification when we say Workers' Day, Labor Day, who falls under the classification of worker okay. in this context? All right. Okay, so we are looking at, uh, I mean, uh, in, in reference to the labor law, mm -hmm. at uh, a person who works under a contract of service. Okay. Okay, so... So that's it. That's contract of service. Contract of service. Okay. So, so once somebody em, um, employs you to deliver a service, mm -hmm. you can be classified as a worker? When we say contract of service, mm. it means that you are working under the direction and supervision of somebody called an employer. Okay. Right. Okay. And so that is what... Uh, with respect to the law, mm. that is what, because mm. that's what the law mm. uh, prescribes. Yeah. prescribes. Okay. So, so, then, so then it also means that everybody, whether it's short-term work or long-term work, you are a worker once you are under the contract. That, it, that, that's, that's how it works. But uh, so then when we speak of the informal sector, for example, or people who are self-employed, mm. do they classify as workers as well? Um, Self-employed, <laughs> because you see, when you look, it's important uh, at this point, so that you look at the coverage, mm. and uh, I'm talking from the point of view of uh, the Labour yes. Commission and the people who qualify to come yeah. uh, before the Commission. Right. And so once you are uh, working under the supervision and direction of somebody, there is an employment relationship, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So the key word is that there is an employment relationship between you and that person. Then okay. you qualify or you are classified as okay. a worker, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And that's usually where the, the friction comes okay. or the possibility, yeah. so it makes sense, right? Yeah. So then what are the duties of a worker? Okay, so you, you <laughs> ask that you want to work, right? And you were available for the work and you are given the work. So you are expected to be punctual, uh, per the prescribed times of the employer. You are expected to work conscientiously in your lawfully chosen occupation. And you are also to work to enhance uh, productivity. So these are some of the duties of a worker. Mm. Um, Angel, the, when it comes to the rights of workers, um, is there a place where, you know, so rights and responsibilities, they go hand in hand, right? Yeah. So the employer is expecting you to 
shoulder your responsibility. The worker, on the other hand, is saying that I have rights. Um, at what point do these work in harmony, and at what point is there potential conflict? Thank you. Your rights are expressed in your conditions of service, okay. in the rules and regulations that binds your establishment. Uh, it behoves on you as a worker to contribute to the wherewithal of the uh, organization because it is the success story of that organization that compensates you. Oh. So within, that is natural. If it's mm. not even prescribed in any law, you should know that it is the level of productivity or your contribution towards productivity that will enable the organization to pay you. Mm. Apart from that, every establishment do have rules and regulations. Uh, that maybe we sign, we agree, and we call conditions of service. Even if it is not written, when you came there, if it is uh, even a if it is casual work, it is expressed to you that look here, you come to work at seven o'clock. Mm. You do this, you do that, you do. You close at this time. These are the things you can do. These are the things that you cannot do. So even verbally, there could be a contract. Mm. Some of the rules and regulations are by conduct. Because once you establish a relationship with somebody at the workplace who is your boss, there are certain things that are done that you also do to contribute to the enhancement of the mm -hmm. place. The rights are prescribed within those rules and regulations mm -hmm. where there are certain limits that the boss or the owners of the organization cannot go beyond mm -hmm. in violating your rights as a worker. Even casuals, you cannot do that. So we have brought all these uh, rules and regulations into a, a simple law we call the labor law mm. in Ghana. That becomes the grand labor law within which the various institutions and organizations can, can express their individual and peculiar <coughs> situations. Mm. You know? So for example, if you work in city uh, TV, there are rules and regulations in city TV. There are also boundaries that the organization can also push you to. Mm. When the organization needs your services with, beyond those boundaries, then there should be a compensation package that should be spelled out for you to do or not to do. Mm. So these are all expressed in the labor law. Okay. okay. Now, in the, in the case of casual workers, where you refer to the verbal contract, mm. if there's any conflict, of any sort, would it not just now become a case of my word versus your word? You know, and, and, and what, how, how do we no. resolve such situation? As a matter of fact, in Ghana, the law even gives a limit to which you can even maintain somebody as a casual labor. Oh, oh I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. If the person is working for you over a certain period, is it, is it, is it, is it six, six months? Six months. Okay. Then the person is no longer a casual, 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 casual okay. worker. Okay. Now, it also depends on the size of the organization. Where I talk about verbal is sometimes this one or two type of employment okay. thing. That, but mostly, all these things, for, you see, the leadership of the labor organization within the establishment is negotiated conditions of service for mm. everybody who works in that organization. Mm. So when you come in as permanent labor or casual labor, you are covered by those conditions of service, right? Uh, Look, there is no law that is so perfect that everything is written black and white. Yeah. Yeah. There are some that are just conventions mm. and practices mm. that have been culminated into rules and regulation okay. acceptable by mm. the organization. Mm. Mm. You know, so let's say that casual workers, and that's something people don't know, and I'm, I'm sure that Madame will tell you the number of cases that have come to the Labor Commission where people think that casual laborers can be, or casual workers can be treated anyhow. Mm. And they, mm. they, 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 they realize that no, there are rules and regulations <laughs> yeah. that you handle casual uh, workers. Yes. Yeah. So if you could just give us a sense of, we've talked about the, 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 um, the worker and the rights and you know, responsibilities, but what about the employer? Okay. Duties and, and rights of the employer. Okay, so the employer has the right to hire and fire. Okay, <laughs> hire and fire. Hire and fire. <laughs> <laughs> the employer has the right to um, discipline a worker, transfer a worker, and uh, to produce the, uh, 
products, I mean, that uh, the employer wants to. But in all of these, as I talked about, the employer has the right to hire, that is to employ and to terminate. Uh, those rights must be exercised within the context of the law. Mm. It must not be exercised capriciously. Okay. Because uh, the rights have been prescribed, but then um, the law also prescribes if you want to terminate, mm, there's a way to go, there's about, a way it. To go okay. about it. Mm, yeah. And just a bit on, just to add up to the casual work that it it's important for us to clarify that when we talk about casual work, it means that that work is intermittent. Mm. Right. There's been a lot of exploitation in that area. Mm. You see people working uh, eight to five every day for so many years, yet they are, they are classified as yes. casual, casual workers. Yes. And so yeah. those are some of the issues mm. that come. So that's, mm. that's a bit. So that's, then the employer, uh, I've talked about the employer, some mentioned some of yeah. the employer's uh, 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 duties. Then the employer has the responsibility to pay the agreed remuneration. Mm. The employer has the right to uh, make effective the channels of communication. The employer has the right to protect the interests of the of, mm -hmm. of the worker, mm. so these are some of the rights of uh, the the employer. employer. Okay. Mm. Mm. I see. Mm. Yeah. Yes, let me emphasize that termination. You can terminate. You terminate within the confines of the law. Mm. If there are several package that should go with termination, you have then to you, pay, you it. pay it. If you have to inform your workers ahead of time and it is prescribed in conditions of service that you have to inform your workers two or three months ahead of time, mm -hmm. you will have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, those higher, well, we labor, we don't like the word fire. What's so wrong with the word fire? Oh, you dispense of somebody's uh, work. But <laughs> you terminate, you the terminate the in, okay. in a gentle manner. In a gentle manner. You know, but when you use fire, the higher uh, fire. it seems a bit it's aggressive. It's a bit aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, because sometimes uh, you you'd receive some of the complaints and um, you, you, I'm, I'm picking it up from the, some of the complaints that are filed, that the complainant will say, I've been fired from my job. Mm. So just for, for them to appreciate yeah. that uh, termination mm. is, is, is about firing, but yeah. they use some of it to say that yeah. I've been fired mm. uh, yeah. from my, my job. And let me quickly also add that uh, the labor law, as he, as he rightly said, it sets the minimum standards, mm. right? Mm. And so it set the standards upon which the employment relationship must be governed. Yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. that, that is what mm. labor laws uh, mm. actually do. Okay. You know, let me just add something. Lab relationship between workers and employers mm. is, in, is evolved over time. Mm. You know? And there ought to be an atmosphere of good labor practice for both the employer mm. and the employee in such a manner that it reduces acrimony yeah. to the barest minimum. Mm. Okay. If you fire a set of workers unruly, what is going to happen is that another group of workers are going to develop a certain attitude. Yeah. Where though you can fire, you may have consequences for, yeah. oh, for firing. Of course. Therefore, uh, there was a time where, you know, conditions of service and uh, scheme of service and things, some are just the preserve of the employer mm -hmm. to say that, look, when you come to work with me, these are my conditions. Mm. But because of good working environment, it is advised that both the employer and the employee sit down to work that document out to be owned by both the employer and the employee. Within that document, there are prescriptions as to how to hire and mm. let me use the word <laughs> and fire. <laughs> <laughs> You've yes. got it. So that is how mm. it goes. Mm. Um, like I said, uh, fire. <laughs> <laughs> so let's use terminate. Uh -huh, terminate. Terminate, yes, yes. And there are times that it is necessary for employment to be terminated mm. when the organization is not even making profit when it is running ahead of its budget, then there are ways of dispensing of the work or the labor of some workers, mm -hmm. and it sometimes becomes very necessary. Mm -hmm. But when it is done properly, I, I know a, an organization, we just recently, just, just recently, who had to let go about 20 workers 
but promise them that if within this period we are able to make this match up, yeah. you will be the first group of people to be who really want to rehire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. But for now, this is all that we can do. Mm -hmm. I think that atmosphere is what we expect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather than keeping the people and then... Then all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> 20 of you will be leaving this organization <laughs> by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Count yourself lucky. Go and pray to God. God uh, Friday, when you come, you just want to go to the notice board. board <laughs> and then you, I mean, that is yeah, a very yeah. demeaning, demeaning yeah. way of yeah. handling your workers. Yeah. 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 And it's so, also very important, sorry, it's also very important to know that the relationship, the, the, it's a relationship, mm. right? And, and if you look at it from the context of relationship, and uh, that the parties have uh, rights and responsibilities and all that, then you will treat uh, the other party. Because if we remember we are coming from a certain background. Mm. We've moved away from the master-servant relationship mm. to the era of partnership. Mm. So both employers and employees now must see themselves as partners in their relationship. Mm. So that you, if somebody is a partner, how do you treat the person? Mm. Mm. But if you still are under the mindset of a master-servant relationship, that is where you can decide, I can dispense with the services of the, of the employee anyhow. Mm. Now it's, it's not like that again. Mm. You can't do that. Right. Mm. So I want us to get into really understanding what the contract of service Correct. is and what it entails. But before that, um, Angel, I'll come back to you. We're talking about the labor law in general and you know, workers in general and the rights of workers and what workers are supposed to mm. do, rights of employers and all that. But when it comes to, and I'm coming to you, Angel, because within the professional fraternity, for example, where there are teachers, where there are lawyers, where there are doctors, is there a case where sometimes what the profession stipulates for the worker, it can override certain things within you know, the, the, the employment environment? No, uh, for example, uh, if you are a teacher, you are supposed to be in school at a particular time. Mm. We call something time on task. That you get to the, you know, <laughs> somebody can go to the classroom. So he's in the classroom. He's marked that he's in the classroom. Mm. Is he working mm. <laughs> to place value on that 40 minutes or one hour? To the extent one can say that, oh, I have a value for that one hour and that he's been able to teach. Mm. Yeah. Or he's just in the classroom <laughs> running around one word <laughs> for 40 minutes, that sort of thing. Or yeah. talking about himself. Or talking about <laughs> himself, how he went to university, <laughs> how he was. The, people do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's against the rules. Okay. Now, so you have a situation where you cannot, on the altar of professionalism, sacrifice the purpose for which you have been employed. Mm. In fact, if you are a professional, that is where you will have to make it count and show the difference between you as a professional mm. and a non-professional. Mm. And then the outcomes of a professional should be distinctly higher than a non-professional. Mm. So it is not the possession of a paper certificate. Mm. It is the output. Okay. or what you are able to show mm. for what you call yourself. Mm. That is why there are certain medical doctors no one will want to go to. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and there are also certain medical doctors everybody will want to, to go there, to. Yeah. The type of work he does, his human relationship, mm. the output, people get satisfied mm. when they go to. There are also some lawyers you will not want to take your case to. Mm. Because they've always lost cases in court. Mm -hmm. The same way, there are certain particular teachers everybody wants to have private classes yeah. with. So for me, what I would say is that let your professionalism show in the output of work you do. Okay? You can't also say I'm a professional, therefore my professionalism goes beyond the rules and regulations established. Mm -hmm. No. You work under those rules. And I'll give an example. In the Ghana Education Service, it is against the rules that you ask children to go and fetch water from the stream to your house. Mm. Does it happen? It does. Mm. Is it against the rule? Yes. Mm. Especially when you go to rural communities. Mm. 
You cannot say that, well, if I don't get water, how do you expect me to teach? It is not the duty of the child, of the child yeah. to fetch water for you. There were certain things we used to do in the past that you are not supposed to do today. Some have fallen foul of the law and the law is dealt with them. Okay? So under no circumstances should anyone uh, behave in a manner that offends the rules and regulation that binds him or her. Mm. That is how I'll, 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 I'll put it. Gotcha. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. So let's go for a break. And when we come back, Dr. Dr. Welbeck will talk about the contractor service. This is Still Breakfast Daily right here on City TV. We'll go for a break. And when we come back, the conversation continues here on Workers' Day. <laughs> above and beyond to give us five times the love. Tell us how much your mom means to you and let's HD Plus make her feel like five times a star this Mother's Day. From 13th April to 1st May 2023, record and send a 30 second video about how amazing your mom is. Feely, feely to the WhatsApp number 020 Your video will compete with other entries to win one of the 65 inch Nasco flash screen TVs with an HD Plus model for mom. HD Plus, the feely, feely experience. Sweet, sweet mothers, how could we ever forget you? This year, on Mother's Day, we plan to do quite the festive opposite. What better way to show out for our beloved Matrix than an entire evening dedicated to celebrating the phenomenon that is motherhood. Mama's boys and mama's girls, for all their love and sacrifices, here comes the ultimate Mother's Day gift. Picture this, a flavorous Ghanaian spread with countless mouth-watering treats just like Mama's cooking. A glitzy dance floor serenaded by Mama's favorite tunes just for Mama to boogie. And a stunningly intricate portrait of Mama just to remind Mama how truly beautiful she is. Join us on Sunday the 14th of May 2023 at 4pm for an enchanting evening of appreciation and enjoyment for our feminine support systems. The venue is at the City Gardens, number 5, Ola Hansen Lane, Tesano, and the rate is a cool 350 Ghana CDs. It's going to be an evening of Ghanaian food, dance, and the celebration of motherhood. So book now and secure a seat for Mama at the Air Portrait of Mama Mother's Day Dinner now. For more inquiries, call 020 Five nine seven three nine seven three. The portrait of Mama Mother's Day dinner is powered by City TV with support from City FM and is sponsored by Dano Milk and Tasty Tom. Welcome back. It's still the May Day edition of Breakfast Daily here on City TV. And we're talking about being a worker in Ghana. We have uh, Dr. Welbeck, who is from the National Labor Commission here. She's the Director of Admin as well as Human Resources at the National Labor Commission. And of course, we have our very own Ejo Kabonu here as well, the President of the Graduate Teachers Association of Ghana, Nagrat. They're here. And we've been talking about what it means to be a worker, what it means to be an employer, what is expected of each party. And currently, we're about to get into what goes into a contract of employment. So I'll come to you, Dr. Welbeck. We've spoken a lot about contracts of employment. You said that they can be written or they can be verbal. But really, what should we expect to see in a contract of employment? And especially for those who maybe for a very long time have not worked within this kind of setting where such a document or such um, an agreement exists. And so they don't even know what to expect or what to look out for when they enter into such an environment. All right. 
So, um, first of all, when you are given uh, an appointment, you are given a letter, which we normally refer to as the offer letter. Now, the terms and conditions of that offer mm. is what constitutes the con uh, conditions of service. Now, the law requires that within two months after you've engaged, and that is by law, right? After you've engaged a person, you should furnish the person with the particulars of the terms of the contract mm. so that you have um, the working hours, okay. the disciplinary issues, the rules and regulations <coughs> concerning the work yeah. contained in the document so that if I am told that I am late to work, there should be a reference document, right? And there should be sanctions that are also uh, um, contained. Okay. So if I'm late, what are the what what is the what are the sanctions, or what should be done? What should the employer do, and all that? So basically, it's about the rules and regulations concerning the particular okay. uh, sorry the particular work. Okay. So yes, the hours of work, your social security, your leave days, sick leave. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, if you suffer injury on the job, if uh, disciplinary, you are caught up in disciplinary uh, matters and all that. So these then form the terms of the contract of employment. So when you talk about conditions of employment, under which conditions am I working? Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically these are the things. And uh, he earlier on mentioned that uh, it's also implied by conduct. Yes, it is. But um, the law, now you should note that once you employ, because it becomes so difficult and again i'm coming from the point of the commission saying mm. that when you come before the commission and you you don't have a document mm. right it it makes it really difficult and so then the law would be be applied to to um deal with the matter so it's an it's an advice to uh, all employers to ensure that once you employ somebody and you give the offer letter let the person have a condition. Some, some give it at the onset. They offer letter, then they attach. They tell you this document is attached. Mm -hmm. Some also make a mistake by saying uh, other conditions of employment refer to HR, oh. something, something. That's one. It's, it's a big mistake because at the point, it's bread and butter matter. At the so point you, I'm looking you just for agree. Yes, I'll right. just agree. And if you come and you cannot prove that those other conditions of service were really known to the worker, okay? And you are applying a particular provision as a sanction, and you can't prove that, yes, you finish the worker with a copy of it, then you find yourself wanting. Oh. So uh, basically, this is what it entails. Yeah. So as much as possible, even um, where you're not dealing with a very big establishment, where you may have an HR office or an HR officer or a manager, People should try to document these things, is what we are saying. That is what you it know, is. Even if it's a simple sheet of paper yes. where that we, is what it we all agree yeah. that this is what it yeah. is. Because wait till you find yourself in a dispute and then you'd appreciate the, the reason why some of these things need to be documented. Yeah. But let me just add a little. You see, the lack of job and the want of job mm -hmm. makes the worker at the stage of employment very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And does have a very weak voice. Because under, the, under, under normal circumstances, before I take the employment, I ought to insist on these things. Yeah. But then who are you? Mm -hmm. You are just about to be employed. And then you are here insisting. Yeah. And you know our society. Our society is, uh, has some aversion for those who assert themselves. Mm -hmm. we, like, we, 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 we rather admire and praise those who are docile. Oh. Yeah. You know, like I said, I have never received a best worker anywhere before. <laughs> Not because I don't work hard, but maybe because they see that oh, this, this man, he is too uh, assertive and it's all It's almost like you're way. a troublemaker. Uh -huh. yeah. Society, but troublemakers change society. Yeah, Never of course. About yeah, that. They, yeah, they of change. Course. You know. That is what led you to Mayday, isn't it? <laughs> that, that led us to Mayday. Yes. yes. You see, so, so at that stage, yeah. it becomes very difficult mm. for the employee mm. to make certain demands. If they say that, oh, this person will be a problem. It will so be a let's problem, so let's take him out. And then don't forget that there's also the probation period. Mm. And after the probation period, they can say, well, they don't want we, we, don't, we don't want you. But then I'm very happy that when there is conflict, 
the Labor Commission will demand from the employer whether you have done A, B, C, D before you insist that the person ought to follow those and that the rules and regulations. So it is in the interest of everybody, both the employer and the employee, to ensure that the right thing is done. And sometimes our advice employee sign to it mm -hmm. so that it proves that you've read and understood what you are doing yeah. and you've signed to it and keep a copy of it. And there are some workers too, excuse me to say, they have not read through mm -hmm. their conditions of employment. Yeah. They've been employed, but they, they, don't, they don't even know that there are conditions of yeah. employment. Yeah. So we all have to be responsible in those endeavors. Mm -hmm. So when, when that document is presented to you as a worker seeking work, can you ask for a day or two to take it back to perhaps someone who can also go through with you, can help you understand if you are not sure? Can you do that? You can. You know, and, and, and here, uh, let me emphasize um, uh, uh, the importance of um, human resource practices and, and when we are offering people jobs. And I am saying this because the responsibility is on the employer, right, at this point, that we should do away with the fact that, yes, because the worker, worker is anxious and looking for a job, and so we would give anything and, and would assume the person should read it. In, in <coughs> present human resource uh, uh, practices, you need to get the people to really understand mm -hmm. what, remember I said it's a contract, yes. okay? It's a contract, what they are signing to. Mm -hmm. So if the worker requests for it, and it will depend on what policies you have in place. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, because after all, when you give the offer letter, you are given the time to communicate your acceptance or not. And so during this time, the worker, you have the document, so you have the opportunity to get somebody to really explain the terms of the contract uh, 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 for you mm -hmm. before you append your signature mm -hmm. to it. Because um, recently there was a case that the commission handled and it, uh, somebody says I've been promoted and um, I was promoted and, uh, without a promotion letter but he continued to act in that, perform in that promotion and he retired and after some years is demanding for um, the promotion because according to him he, he asked severally but he didn't write mm. this verbal issue this this had some of the implications mm. on the side of the worker as well he didn't write to the effect that because after you've you've asked for a, a time i think you should you should write mm. okay so that you have the evidence so now would you bring a witness <laughs> and that witness if the witness is still in employment mm. the implication yeah, because, you know so for both the employer and employee and I, then i take us back to the to, to my initial statement of social partnership. Let us not take advantage of each other. Mm. Let us respect each other. Let us consider the employment relationship, uh, uh, the employment contract as a relationship, and let us treat ourselves as, as partners uh, as we uh, uh, engage in the relationship. You see, on that, hmm. <laughs> uh, in account, there's a man for a post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The moment they say, oh, can you act yeah. as the manager, yeah. the Speed. person speaks. Yes. <laughs> you know, the law prescribes, you have to write a letter officially informing the person yeah. that he or she is going to be in an acting capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, but people are overwhelmed with the position. And this affects my own profession, my teachers in the Ghana Education Service. Oh, look, you go and act as senior house mistress mm. oh, or the America. Mm -hmm. You will be there for several years. There is no letter to it. There is no mm. uh, allowance. allowance given to you. Only for you to... Uh, there was a time in a certain school in Accra, a headmistress just handpicked two teachers and asked them to be assistant headmistresses. <laughs> <laughs> Those teachers worked for many, many years until there was a case in the school. Mm. And then the Ghana Education Service headquarters came in and said, provide the letter that appointed you as an assistant headmistress. Nothing. There was no letter to them. So they asked them, revert to your position as a classroom teacher. Wow. After they all came, those years. After all these you years, wow. they came to me. And this is so does that mean that we've wasted 
our years acting and I say yes, that is what it means because mm -hmm. there is no official letter. The headmistress of the school is not the appointing authority. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that he or she does not have the right to appoint you as an assistant. Mm -hmm. So there's no letter. So you've done national service once again yeah. for oh, the Republic of Ghana. Yes. For years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the, the, the assumption of the post was so attractive to the extent that they did not think about their own conditions. Mm. And this happens several. And I'm sure Madame's outfit mm. has had similar cases before them in this realm. Yeah. <laughs> In the case where either party flouts mm -hmm. the agreement within the contract, mm -hmm. what happens to either side? Right. How do we seek redress on either right. side? So in the case that the contract is uh, a provision is mm -hmm. flouted or the contract is flouted, then first of all, you have to draw the other party's attention okay. to the violation of the contract that you you signed and uh, see uh, what their response would be and then this takes us again uh, to, so the conditions of service then so you have the grievance procedures and everything stated that is spelled out some institutions there's no grievance procedure mm -hmm. so you have a situation where for example the provision is flouted for example and the employee files a complaint with the national labor commission then when it comes and normally when the complaint is filed, you refer to the other party, the respondent. The respondent can tell you that, too. the person did not exhaust the internal mechanisms. So it means that there is an internal mechanism oh. there, which you have to go through to have your issue addressed. Yeah. But for some, they would, I mean, you could see clearly, they would feel the portion to say there's a portion like that, there's no internal system in place. So where there's no internal system in, in place, it means that the commission has to take on the issue. Now, you've, so this is the contract. This is what you agreed to. You have violated it. So mm. this, you have to remedy. <laughs> yeah. So you have, there, sh there must be the remedy. Mm. You must go back and, and, and rectify the violation. Mm. Okay. Mm. And, and also, let me make this important point. I did say that the labor law sets the minimum standards. There's been a location where a particular case where the person has signed a contract, understood everything, the leave days that were prescribed were 14 days, he signed to it and all that. Then he said he, he brought a case saying that, yes, I, I signed to this contract, I signed for 14 days leave, but I, I literally I realized that the law says 15 days, and I spoke to the employer, and the employer says that, but you signed on to this oh, contract. Oh. No, you cannot do a contract uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> without being minded of yeah. what the law, the law says. Law. And so, yes, you can't, mm. the law prescribes 15 days, so why the 14 days and all that? Mm. So these are some of, so where you, you feel that your rights have been violated, first of all, there's a contract, whether verbal or written, draw the employer's attention, draw the other party's attention, take the steps and have it redressed. If it is not redressed, then you file a complaint. Mm -hmm. file a complaint. In, in other words, the laws of your establishment cannot go outside of the bar law yeah. of the yeah. yes. right. Now, we, we just spoke about leave. So let's stay on that. All right. The labor law says 15 minimum. working days minimum of leave in a year. Calendar year. Uh, calendar year. So, so let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, why would somebody, an employer, say, OK, if that's the case, I'm still going to do below that. Have you had situations where it's ignorance on the part of the employer? Or are people trying to play smart? Uh, you know, how does it happen? Or are there certain professions that make it difficult to do the 15 days minimum? Well, in your experience, Dr. Welbeck, what have you seen? <laughs> All right, you know, um, in a calendar year, a calendar year is 200 working days, right? And so it depends on where your working year begins, whether January or February, it must be 200. There's okay. a calendar year, then the worker qualifies for, for leave, and the minimum is 15 days. Okay. Remember I said the law sets the minimum standards, yes. but you can go beyond that. So you are not, you are not supposed to give somebody leave lesser than the 15 days, mm. 15 working days. If for any reason, and the leave, the law further, uh, goes further to say that leave can be taken in two equal installments. Okay. So f if you feel that the, p the person is so indispensable or the nature of the job is a specialized job 
and so the person cannot take all the leave days, then agree with the person. It is not you imposing. Mm. And let's, let's, because leave is a right, mm. right? Mm. Leave is a right. And so once I, you need to, you do a, a leave, a roster, and I indicate when I want to go on leave, and the time is due. If for any reason you don't, you feel that I should stay on, then you need to have that should be a conversation with me agreement. but not to impose yeah. on end when i stay on it means that i'm staying on because there's an agent or there's a particular thing that has to be done within do that period that i want to go on leave when that thing is done i have to go on my leave yeah. right yeah. and so you can this is about having that conversation so it's not about an employer imposing on the, and if if <laughs> One interesting thing that I need to chip in here is that if you see the number of leave days that are commuted to cash when there's a dispute, that people get monies for it, mm -hmm. leave is not uh, supposed to be sold. Mm -hmm. But if you fail uh, in your responsibility as an employer to ensure that your workers take their leave, you have situations where employers would say that, oh, but the person did not apply. Mm -hmm. It is your responsibility to ensure that the person goes on leave because the person is occupying your office. Mm -hmm. And so when it happens, eight years, 10 years, people have not gone on leave. All the leave days will be commuted to cash and you will pay. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to ensure that our workers go on leave, have a roster, and make sure mm. they take their leave. 15 days minimum, is you can go above that. <laughs> <laughs> is there a situation where it can be said that there's an unfair termination of employment? Oh, yes. And what's the remedy for that? All right. So, um, first, if, you f if the employer fails to prove that the termination is fair. Okay. Okay. So, unfair termination... If you terminate an employee's uh, contract because the employee is seeking to be join a union, okay, that's an unfair termination. That's an unfair. That's an example of an unfair termination. But what, is, is, but city, what if is City Radio and are you unionized? We, well, I mean, uh, I'll come and uh, <laughs> uh, organize the union. <laughs> Some no, ends. No, so so so, so that I just gave no, one example. No, so the, no, so what immediately comes to my mind? Oh, what, when, you don't want me to add. No, 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 no. I want you to add some more. But what immediately comes to my mind when you when you say that is that is it automatic that all employ employees, employees should be part of. You know. Oh, it is. Uh, you see, it is a right that is guaranteed yeah. by uh, ILO, okay. by the, uh, the Constitution, and okay. by the labor law. So okay. once the workers express mm. their views to be part of the union, okay. they have the right to. to Except to that you come under Section 79 mm. okay. and have that conversation with the union okay. to find out whether they qualify okay. a person. And when it comes to qualification, mm. it's important. That's that's a matter of discussion to find out whether the person is holding a position of trust, mm. decision maker, and all those things. Mm. But yes, that right, once the worker to decides that I join the union, mm. you can't uh, deny mm. that, that yeah, right. Just, there is a case that happened. In time, I don't want to mention the name of the organization. That nearly made uh, labor, organized labor moving to do that premises when the management was preventing the workers from getting unionized. Mm. But at the time that we were planning to move in, they uh, decided to sit with the workers. And oh, they realized that. Uh, yeah, yes, we were, <laughs> we were really going to move in. But you know, that's right. I don't know why sometimes management have aversion for unionism. Look, in the absence of the unions, there would have been chaotic situations. Mm. There are times that we, we get very stubborn. Yes, we have to because we just reflect the situation within the workplace. But then you now have an identifiable leadership mm. that you can deal with. Mm. Because things don't go awry before you want to find solution uh, uh, to the problems. Every way, look, I traveled somewhere to some country and then uh, I took a taxi and the taxi driver decided to engage me in a conversation. Oh, why am I here? So I came for the international labor. Ah, unions, trouble, 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 trouble. There's going to be a strike in his country. Because, <laughs> they, you know, people have that... Because we have come there. Yeah, we've come there. They know that there's going to be a strike within two or three weeks after this conference, there'll be a strike. People have that notion about unions. So some management really, really even attempt to pay people out yeah. of becoming unionized. Yeah. But that is against 
the law. Mm. The law gives the right to every worker to form or join union of his or her choice. Mm. That is what the law uh, states. And we will, we will plead with every management that, look, allow workers to form unions when they want to form the unions. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, mm. Dr. Wong, let me come back to you. I mean, May is also Mother's Month. Okay. And I, I wouldn't be doing my <laughs> motherhood <laughs> or my womanhood justice if I didn't ask about maternity okay. leave. I, so I'll, I'll let you tell us what it is. Okay. I won't tell you what I believe I know All since right. you are representing the National okay. Labor Commission. So what is maternity leave one? And then how long is it supposed to All be? Right. And post maternity leave, are there any concessions that should be made for a new mother? Okay. And so one of the grounds for unfair termination is when a woman, uh, the termination is effected because a woman worker has gone on maternity oh. leave. So maternity protection. So um, when a woman is pregnant, okay, she's protected by the law. Yeah. Now, when she's sick as a result of the pregnancy oh. and she's given days off, that should not be taken out of her leave. Of her leave. Okay. Again, when a woman is due for delivery and the doctor tells which date, okay, that she would deliver, it means from the date of delivery, she has 12 weeks maternity leave. Okay. Okay. If she gives birth to one baby. Oh. If she gives birth to two babies, she has 14 oh. days. And if she... 14 weeks. Uh, 14, sorry. 14 weeks. Mm. And if she she's also operated upon, mm. the normal, so if it's not two over the C-section, she has additional two weeks. Mm. Now, when the woman uh, worker is on... Uh, and that, that 14, uh, uh, that 12 weeks, the normal mm. one, or the 14 uh, weeks, is in addition to any leave that she... Has accrued mm -hmm. so that would be part okay. of it when she's sick during the maternity leave mm -hmm. and she goes to the hospital and she's given excuse duty that those days would be in addition they are not taken They're out not taken out of the maternity, of the maternity. Leave. and that is applicable in leave situation when even you are you are on your normal leave for everybody okay. oh, so, I see. so sick an days not leave, part yes an annual leave if you are sick during your annual leave, yeah. it's added to. It's yeah. added to. Okay. But you see, one thing that workers, you know, you have to uh, let the employer have that excuse to before. Mm. But if you bring it after, I would assume that if yeah. an employer that you want more days, so yeah. all these, uh, 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 so that is added to to mm. the leave. Now, when you deliver, uh, when you, you resume work, you the employer has to give you a time break to breastfeed. Uh, the children. Normally the practice is that uh, if you close at five, it's, it's a practice. He talked so much about the practice yeah. and this relationship mostly is also informed by practices. Yeah. So one hour, you close three o'clock, mm -hmm. you assume that the person will take one hour to reach home and then use one hour to yeah. the one hour to take care of that. Because if you don't have a baby friendly and where you have provided, you know, people have uh, nurseries, nurseries and all that. So within the yes, community. So that, that is. And then when and a woman uh, a woman is on maternity leave, you cannot terminate. Even if you are doing redundancy, you can't include the hair. Mm. So these are some oh, of the protections you, you know that I'm I smiling. wanted. Why are you smiling? Why are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> well, after Dr. Welbeck spoke, I started getting scared for my younger girls who are seeking employment. Mm. Because the bosses who say, she is now going to get married, yeah. and we are going to lose her for this number of mm. days. Mm. But, you know, without that, the society cannot move. Yeah. And it is a reality mm. of life. Yeah. And that takes the understanding of management or bosses to appreciate the fact that that is part of life. Mm. And we have, there are some, now uh, Education International is even insisting that every school should have a place for uh, like breastfeeding, um, breastfeeding mm. where you can come keep your baby. Mm. And uh, Education International is insisting on that, even after the leave, because the breastfeeding period goes beyond yes. the leave yes. period. Two That's years. Yes. 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 So, yeah. two years. So the law, I mean, up to one year. Up to yes. one year. But a very no. good employer would even give mm. uh, 18 yeah, months. That, okay. right. So the law yeah. will cover breastfeeding yes. up to one, one year. year. Yes, yes, yes. So, so for 
one year. There's a lot of work that needs to be done for people to appreciate some mm. of these uh, realities. You know, the if, if, it, if it is not appreciated, then you have a situation where it will not be expressed. But then at the ballroom, they'll say, look, let's make sure that the number of ladies, young ladies who are employed yeah. here are limited so that we can get the oh. men to work. That is why you go to most establishments and you have a lot of men yeah. against women. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or they'll say, let's employ women above the age of 45 mm. so that we don't get yeah. that. And don't you no. think if we don't also take care, because uh, uh, now we're having a lot of career, yeah. people would then decide not to give birth. And that's what's happening. That, 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 that becomes happening. a problem. Because mm. we produce the human yeah. resources. Yes. That's yes. And if you want to have human resources mm. to yeah. develop yeah. the country, mm. then yeah. you must give birth. That's yeah. also yeah. happening. Yeah. A lot of young women are skeptical yeah. about yeah. giving birth. So I, I think we yeah. need to educate everybody. And yeah. Madam, uh, thank you for your, 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 your contribution here because I see it as very valuable because of where yeah. I am yeah. and where I'm coming from. Because I do know, I've sat on a lot of boards, I've sat on a lot of decision-making platforms, and I do know some of the conditions, the consideration that goes in, in the employment of people. And this is one of the major, mm. it is not written in any book, yeah. it is not expressed anywhere, but everybody knows that it, 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 it happens. Look at the number of days that we are talking here. Yeah. You know, yeah. and somebody who wants to achieve a certain result will say, am I going to lose this lady for these mm -hmm. number of exactly. days? Then let's advise ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And sometimes it affects promotion. Oh. Because then they'll say, oh, yeah, last year she gave birth. This year she's giving birth again. Mm -hmm. Next two years she'll get pregnant and get, and give birth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, so these are some of the issues. Yeah. But... Labor issues are very complicated yeah, and yeah. needs people to understand them. Yeah. Okay. But just to, to wrap up on that note, is there any advice for women who are workers then in, in terms of planning and what does the National Labor Commission recommend to women? How should we also go about making sure that we don't fall prey to some of the loopholes that feel may free exist? Give birth. Yeah. <laughs> That's feel free. Yeah. And, and you feel know, free and give birth. Feel free and give birth. You know when you even engage someone, you know, you ask the people to go for medical mm. yes. tests and all that. You can't ask a, a woman worker to go and do a, a maternity a oh. pregnancy test, mm. you know, because if you engage, okay, if you engage and the person is on probation mm. and they are pregnant, you can't terminate mm. because of, of the fact. It's just that if, that if the person delivers before the probation ends, it comes back, you just have to extend the probation okay. and all that. So uh, as for take care, we take care, take care of it. You should know your right. Mm -hmm. That is a, the right be, uh, has been granted by the by law. And you know, interestingly, two people, uh, there are two people in the game, but it's only one person who <laughs> success. And is that these, these, these <laughs> other people are the ones who go to the boardroom to and, decide. And decide these things. <laughs> and they also have children. <laughs> That's why I talk about educating everybody. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, 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 madam, imagine a lady comes for an interview pregnant. You know, I saw that one. Uh -huh, you see? Mm -hmm. You know, I, saw that one. I mean, it depends. It, 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 but for certain professions, it's important. For certain, but if she comes to the interview and she's pregnant and she's good, and she's mm. good, yeah. then you can have a conversation about how that's to conversation. proceed. I, I, and you can have that conversation. But there are certain professions. Mm. You might all in all of this, we must look at the exemptions. There are certain professions. Mm. For example, if you are a flight attendant and yes. all that, yeah. as for that one, yeah. they can't take you yeah. when because they have their own laws. Mm. Because you can't fly. Uh, um, Hey, or, or, or your female construction worker. Mm. I mean, so they have to be carrying those, blocks and yeah. so on. So those ones, yeah. if I mean the nature of the job uh, does not uh, mm. or would affect you, mm. because even if a woman is pregnant, upon the fourth month of pregnancy, you don't have to transfer yeah. out of outside. Okay. You yeah. know that kind of okay. thing. So it depends. It depends, mm. and I think it's and about <laughs> it's about having that conversation <laughs> and having that. Um, I say a little of a, a bit of a human face. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's important yeah. because you could have a very brilliant person. You took the person. The person is contributing, uh, and uh, the person gets pregnant. You are saying that because it's in probation, you have to do away with it. <laughs> uh, always, I quote <laughs> President Kufo. He once said that employers in this country pretend as if they are paying employees, and the workers pretend as if they are working. If you want to be an employer, 
be an employer. Mm -hmm. so, These are some of the risks. So, so <laughs> let's, so let's, okay, so I have a couple of questions. Um, these things that we've discussed here basically cut across whether it's pu public or private, private sector, yeah. right? Yeah, it just cuts Once you're a worker. Okay. So, now, um, we'll talk about strikes, but before we get to that, um, if there are special days mm -hmm. that you need, so let's say we're, I'm going to get married, okay. right? I need planning days yes. off. Does that come out of my annual leave or can that be created as a special addition to my leave days? All right. Okay, so you know, uh, the, the leave, the leave, these did not, and the law did not recognize all of these days. Mm. But he said something that um, where you are in a space that mm. uh, there's capacity to negotiate, mm. that is if you have a union, that some of these things are negotiated. But if you don't have it, and some employers also, even without having the union in, 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 in place to have, yeah. they have some of these uh, facilities uh, there for uh, the workers. They have compassionate leave, which you can fall on mm. in case you want to, I mean, the such, yes. uh, you want to go and marry yeah. and all that. And um, yes, or you, your child is sick and mm. you want to take, so you justify it and then you can be granted mm. compassionately mm. so that it doesn't affect the your annual leave. leave, the okay. annual leave. Mm. But if you have leave, if it's not there and you have leave, it means you have to take it out. So this is education. We are and talking about it education. it also means that these conversations have too. to happen early. Yeah. 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 You don't just yeah. get up. Don't spring it up. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. one thing, as an employer, you should also be interested in the welfare yeah. of your workers. Mm. You know, when we have a peaceful-minded worker, that person is able to contribute to the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a very volatile young man at the workplace and he comes to you, that he's going to marry, yeah. you should thank God for that. Yeah. Because that <laughs> something will cool him down. Yeah. That is now going to calm him down. So you should thank God for that and aid him to marry quickly. I, I almost know what. <laughs> almost. I almost know what. You know, so, so for me, as the boss of a workplace, yeah. and most workplaces have welfare yeah. uh, schemes and things like that. So it is not, like that's why I said, madam, that it is not everything mm -hmm. that should be written black yeah. and white. Mm. Sense of maturity, conventions, the conventions yeah. practices, the human face, the yeah. human face should human guide yeah. the establishment. Yeah. Other than it loses that human touch, mm -hmm. and it is human beings that you are working mm -hmm. with. So when a worker comes to you, that I, you know, I, I got a case from a certain school that I got so angry where the lady informed the headmistress that he was, or the gentleman, well, that he was going to get married. And then the head told her that, well, I, you've taken your leave already, so go and use the weekend to get married. So I told the gentleman, look, go, go and get married. When you finish, come back and write that mm -hmm. you are. You see, that headmistress has lost it mm -hmm. and does not understand why there should be some accommodation mm -hmm. for that uh, teacher mm -hmm. to go and get married. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So for me, these are things that, these are decisions that you take based on the relationship you have established yeah. with your yeah. with your workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's a there's a very strong emotional intelligence component to all of this. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. people, if people feel indebted to you because you've done something as a favor to them, they end up becoming more productive. Mm -hmm. They're willing mm -hmm. to go beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the extra mile yeah. and all yeah. of that, you know. So, like you I, said, I like your use of emotional intelligence. Yes. Yeah. It is now becoming more valued than intelligent cushion mm -hmm. yeah. as to how the IQ versus the IQ. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 We have some messages here. Yes, this we one, do. Uh, <laughs> you want to go, so go ahead? This one says, good morning, David and Apioka. I'm enjoying the conversation. Please ask the NLC rep if it's lawful for an employer to terminate your appointment without stating it in your termination letter. And this is from Doris in Community 7, Tema. Hmm. That is terminate your appointment. So without terminate stating. your appointment without stating it in your termination letter. Is it, is it, what does that mean? So, so she's saying that reason? So, so yes, maybe the there reasons. reasons. reasons for yeah. your, okay, okay. Reasons for your termination. All right. Yeah. So you want me to respond? Yes. yes. Please. All right. So when you terminate my appointment, and you give me the letter and tell me 
the appointment is terminated and I take it. I say thank you and I go and sit down. That's fine. But if I bring a case mm. against you that I feel that um, my appointment has been unfairly terminated, then you have a responsibility to justify that the termination was based on grounds and it was fair. Mm. Okay, because the law says it provides for fair termination grounds and unfair termination grounds. So if you terminate and I bring a case against you, then it is incumbent upon you, mm. the employer, to justify, to justify. why you terminated mm. my appointment. Mm. But bottom line, some conversations should happen, or, mm. or not necessarily. Well, uh, when you talk about conversation, okay, it could be conversation. Or, you see, the termination must be based on grounds. Mm. You see, uh, it, it used to be those, those days before we got here that uh, most employers would terminate your appointment like when I talked about fire and said it's strong. Mm. That was what it was. Mm. And so um, get to work today, maybe I don't like, uh, the employer doesn't like my makeup, mm. doesn't like my hairstyle, my doesn't like hair. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the employer can just terminate. And so, you know, uh, and and most of the time it was it was so wrong as mm -hmm. it were because uh, why should you terminate my appointment without me yeah. giving me reason mm -hmm. yeah. and so now give reason mm -hmm. and I know most employers have argued from the point standpoint even from the development of the law to say mm -hmm. when an employee can resign without uh, giving mm. reason always it's on personal grounds mm. why should you give reason but i tell you that if you look at the statistics of cases so far from 20, 2005 when the commission was established to uh, 2021 50 almost 50 percent of the cases are based on unfair terminations and wrongful dismissals mm. Mm. and the the um, Deliveries or the judgments by the commission has actually proved that those most about 80 to 90 percent of those uh, terminations were unfair. Mm. So, yes, now you have to give reason. Have to give reason. What's the difference between dismissal and termination? Okay, so sorry, so dismissal, it's so yes, I would classify it as those that fall under minor offenses. Okay, dismissal is for those that fall under the major offense. Uh, so dismissal may be, uh, uh, I have um, misconducted, I have not respected lawful mm. instructions, obeyed lawful instructions, mm. and, and those things that we can classify okay. as, as minor offenses, okay. or have been alleged to have done something, I have been taken through uh, a, a disciplinary purpose, hearing, yeah. and then my appointment is terminated. Okay. Dismissal is for very serious offenses. Mm falsification of records, mm. perjury, you know, and uh, uh, stealing and mm. other things. Mm. For those ones, and one, they are established. I mean, those should actually, in all cases, they should be established. Okay. And so for those ones, they are serious offenses. So the employer dismisses. Mm. And dismisses, with, when you dismiss, it's without notice. Okay. But when you terminate, it's with notice. With notice. Okay. And when you uh, terminate, uh. you all the... Uh, Accrued benefits are paid, are paid. to the emplo mm. emplo employee, including um, any leave, uh, end leave, and all that. But when you dismiss, the employer can decide not to pay your provident fund mm. and all, all those, even things, even yeah. would depending on the offense. So it's mm. for major mm. offenses. So that's okay. it dismissal okay. and termination. Okay. 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 So there's another one here. Good morning, City TV. Please find out from the guests if the law covers people who are schooling and working. And that's from Henry in La. <laughs> <laughs> Schooling and working. I don't know exactly what it, it means by the well, law current, but I imagine, mm -hmm. you know, leeway uh, the, for the, study the, leave, professional okay. enhancement. Uh, okay. It, 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 it all leave. have to be in your condition of service. Because uh, every workplace sometimes needs to improve the professionalism mm -hmm. and the competencies of people. So within it, they will indicate that when you work with us for those number of years, we can give you those hours off for you to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. With the Ghana Education Service, they used to give steady leave with or without pay. pay. Okay. You understand? Uh -huh. But you also cannot just take off mm. without resort to... And you need to get approval. Right. If you don't get approval and you go, you mm -hmm. violated your, your, okay. your, your, your establishment. You need to get approval. Sometimes, like I said, if it is indicated that if you are going to do your... And then sometimes the courses that you do should be relevant right. 
to the job that you are doing mm -hmm. so that the workplace benefits from, from the work that you do. All these things, like I said, if there is a well-established HR department, mm -hmm. then that well-established HR department will give the prescriptions mm -hmm. within which you can operate, you know. So, but if it is where maybe you just have to go and seek permission from the boss, then you ought to seek permission from the boss. Okay. Other than that, it becomes very difficult for you mm -hmm. to take off. So you should... So you should Go and have a conversation with your mm -hmm. boss. Yes. I want to go back to school. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. Yes. This is why mm -hmm. I Even the general education, sir, it is not every subject or course That's that they give steady leave on. Mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. It ought to be relevant to, to the work. Their work. Yeah. 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 And, and, and are there situations where then based on negotiation, your, your, the demands on you at the, at the workplace can be lessened or reduced so yes. that you can then... If it is based yeah. on negotiation mm. and the workplace mm. agrees mm. Mm. that instead of closing at five, yeah. you can close at three yeah. because you are taking an evening program yeah. and you are doing courses mm. that will enhance. Sometimes they will even sign an extension of contract with you okay. mm. that once we've given you some hours yeah. of you also cannot terminate your or, or you resign for yes time. Yeah. Yeah. because this time mm -hmm. the company have sent people outside this country and they sign a contract yeah. that when you come back you can you have to work with us for because they have to benefit yes. yeah. from the sponsorship of that course. they're giving, giving you, you. Mm -hmm. let's talk about striking before we go <laughs> uh, what does the law say about strikes mm -hmm. can employees strike and for whatever reason Oh, madam. But so why are you running away from this one? <laughs> I want her to talk first. I don't <laughs> I'll respond. Okay, so so the law does not about strike, okay. but then the strike again must be exercised within the context of the law. So you have to go through a process in unionized environments, for example. And remember the right to strike is given to unions. Okay. And to national unions for uh, uh, oh, okay. uh, as such. So, uh, yes, you go through negotiation, it doesn't uh, uh, work. Uh, you go, at, at, or when one party, you're having the negotiation, one party is, is fit dragging, mm. okay? You have to serve notice, right? You have to serve notice. And notice is very important. You serve notice on the commission and the employer. Okay. It is okay. not to notice on the commission and copy the employer, yeah, okay. but notice on the commission and, and the employer. Okay. And once that notice, where you need to give seven days notice. Okay. And the notice, the seven days start counting from the date of receipt of the, of the notice. Mm. So if the notice is dated 1st May, mm -hmm. but I receive it on the 3rd of May, we start counting seven days from, from the 3rd of May. Okay. And within this period, the commission may intervene. Most, most of the time it intervenes and says that the parties should appear. It doesn't matter the, whether the appearance is after the seven days or not. Once that intervention is made, it means that we call it cooling off. It mm. means you can't go on the strike. Okay. Okay. The com there's been an intervention, so appear for the matter to be heard. <laughs> so <laughs> negotiation or uh, arbitration, the person, a matter has been, a case has been referred to arbitration and the other party doesn't, it's not subjecting after it has consented to go for arbitration, it's not uh, uh, subjecting itself. Mm. You can set the notice. So you give the notice, seven days, it should expire. Mm. And when it expires and no intervention has been made, then you can go on strike. But you don't give the notice and go on the strike. Yeah, okay. All our strikes in this country have been very lawful. <laughs> <laughs> I, are you speaking for, for, are you speaking for Nagrat? Oh, for every worker. Oh, for every worker. <laughs> you know, you know um, we have what we call the mirror effect. Okay. You know, uh, under normal circumstances, and these are what the law prescribes. But I can assure you that where we find ourselves in this world, sometimes when you don't take action, you are not listened to. And sometimes, look, people even think that strike is initiated by leadership. Mm. Strike is mostly initiated from the ground. Mm. The grassroots. The grassroots. Mm. When leadership is even threatened. There are times that we go to Labor Commission. Labor Commission <laughs> directs that, okay, call up the See, Dr. Welbeck is smiling. Come and, to the table. Uh, come to the table. <laughs> yeah. When you go and call off that strike, it means I've taken some money for yeah. it. And I know they don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> I know how financially they don't have. But that, you see, 
Pride action only comes on when people have reached a point of cul de sac. Mm. Look at what is happening in France. Yeah. You think the workers in France went through any procedure? Oh, they are on daily basis. <laughs> we are even it's very normal. gentle here. I have participated in strike in Europe before. It's a totally different. Hey, Angel, so you're an international oh, striker. No, I mean you go for international <laughs> conference and the action is taken to come and let's go and see <laughs> what and is so happening. You then you join. <laughs> It's a totally different ball game. Mm -hmm. We don't confront policemen here no, or don't. fight with policemen. We don't destroy properties here. Mm. You know, no. Uh, we are very gentle people, <laughs> you understand. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah. look, the number of times management and the most strikes are products of actions that actions have not been taken. Most, when you go to the Labour Commission, you go there and you say, oh, but, uh, uh, last year, this case came here, you directed that we sit with management, we sat with management, and uh, they are more or less like cascading actions mm. of actions that ought to be, have been taken and so on and so forth. No group of workers enjoy strikes, mm. especially teachers. Because as a teacher, when you go on strike, you, go, you have to go and come back. To do the work, because you have yes, if you, if, yeah. you, if you are teaching demand and supply, you can't go back uh, and say you finish demand and supply. You, yeah. have, you have to go back and teach, teach that topic, yeah. because nice. without that, you cannot move to the next topic. Yeah. You know, so it's like work waiting for you mm. to go and do. Mm. So nobody really enjoys it. But some, for example, I'm going to give you an example. As we speak, the last time the government paid uh, car maintenance allowance, to Ghana Education Service Workers was in 2018. Oh, five okay. years. Five years. Wow. But when I strike right now, Madam will write a letter to me <laughs> that I should go and negotiate. <laughs> 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 I pressed the bench. <laughs> <laughs> that's very really good. Five good years. Yeah. Okay? And I can give you countless examples. Now that we are in an era of haircut, there's a lot of violation violation going on. In the name of haircuts. In the name of haircuts. You know, and I don't know what the situation is going to be. We are in May. From now to August, you know, when May Day comes, mm -hmm. you... you, you are be, you serving you, notice? No, we have, we'll be paying you visit. Okay. And then you'll be seeing the complaints <laughs> that people will be bringing to your table. Most violation of contracts yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, for car maintenance allowance, should this be something that ought to be in areas for five years? Well, we're huh. grateful. Thank you. It's, it's been it's a fantastic conversation. Very insightful. Yeah. But can we serve notice verbally? Or you have no, to no, write? no, you have to write. Ah. Oh, you have okay. to write. I thought I have said it. Right. Okay. With City TV yeah. as witness. Uh, we, that's right. <laughs> But thank you, thank you very thank you so much, much. Dr. Benis Welbeck. She is the Director of Admin and Human Resources at the National Labor Commission of Ghana. And we've also had Angel Kabunu, the troublemaker, apparently. Peace, peace <laughs> But he came in you. peace today. <laughs> the President of the Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT. And it's been a wonderful, very, very educative conversation, I yeah. must say, here on May Day. Workers' Day, Labor's Day, whatever you choose to call it. But bottom line, if you're a worker, I hope you've understood what you must do and what your rights are as well. And if you're an employer, what your obligations, your responsibilities are as well. And also, of course, where your rights begin and where they end.